All right, so um, you guys all know me. If you don't, I'm Dave. I think you're, have you been to one of our sessions before? No, I don't think so, so welcome. Um, you, we usually have more people, but it was a very busy place today, it looked like. I, I saw a couple folks leaving the middle school meeting that normally come to my thing, so I think they were only good for one event a day, and that they picked that one instead, which is fine. Um, so this true to form, um, this one is, this is the first time I've delivered this one. As you guys know, I use Whitman as kind of my little training ground before I go out on the road and do things. Sounding board. Sounding board. Yeah, there you go. Um, we still have to do that hot sauce thing too. I got to talk to Melissa about that. I got a case of hot, empty hot sauce bottles with your name on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so this one was, I always enjoy when we start putting these presentations together because I learn things as I go through it too. Um, and there's some really some interesting things here. So um, to start right off with just kind of a couple quick slides about, you know, the importance of healthy cooking, not necessarily healthy eating, but also healthy cooking, because you could get food that's healthy and then cook it, you know, in lard and it's no longer healthy, you know, so that the method counts. But Healthy cooking promotes overall well-being. It manages chronic conditions. We've talked about this a few times now. Like when we did, remember we did the diabetes presentation and you and I were just talking a few minutes ago about, you know, you don't, you don't think it's going to happen. You know, you hear, oh, you know, sciatica, sciatica, and then all of a sudden, bang, you got sciatica. <laughs> you got it. Um, you know, healthy eating does boost your immunity and not only your energy, but your um, your emotional feel, how you feel, your psychological well-being. Healthy eating absolutely contributes to that, and it all supports healthy aging. We always want to choose nutrient-rich foods. We know this, you know, uh, fruits, veggies, lean proteins, whole grains. We want to avoid processed foods, right? Hello, welcome, welcome, have a seat, have a seat. Um, we want to avoid processed foods. What's the definition of a processed food? Does anyone know? Okay, yeah, but what is what would what is the definition of processed food? Not a kind of, say that again? Fatty. Fatty, okay. Anything you can't make at home. Right? So think about it. If you start thinking about processed foods in that those terms, anything you can't make at home, you start realizing a lot more food is processed than we actually realize. For example, I you know, one of the things I think about all the time is chicken soup, Campbell's chicken soup. And oh yeah, you can make chicken soup at home, but those little tiny square perfect bits of chicken, you couldn't make those, right? I don't even know if it's really chicken at this point, but they heat it over high heat. They put additives and preservatives in that you don't have, that you wouldn't want access to anyway, but you don't. So that's the, the real definition when you boil it down. So yeah, bologna is a perfect example. Uh, you know, fatty is a perfect example as well. Um, I eat that chicken if I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, um, I make my, I mean, I have my own chicken. Yeah, there you go. Um, so you just, you know. Some of them do, some of them put, you know, you, you have to be careful. So I, I just look for, for tomatoes that are in, you know, salt and water, that's it. You know, and even the salt I try to do without, but it's, it's some, it's hard. They, did something to they might, they, they might. Yeah, whenever better, the wholer your food is, the better off you are, right? So head lettuce, right, is better than, you know, uh, leaf lettuce is better than bagged lettuce, right? Because that, that's the head lettuce, less people have touched it. Pre-cut fruit, same thing, right? And a, and a lot of processed foods have uh, too much sodium in this. Like Way too much sodium. Too much sodium. We're, we're going to talk about that, yeah. Um, portion control is the big one. You know, this is the one... The, the tips here, use smaller plates, that does work. It really does work. I, I, I'm eating on like a tea saucer lately, you know, just because it, it does make you really think about what you're eating. Um, practice mindful eating habits. You know, think about what you're eating. I, I can tell you, I got in the habit, I was having trouble sleeping. And I get in the habit, I was getting up at midnight and I was just automatically reaching for something in the kitchen to eat. And I'm like, I'm not hungry. I'm bored, you know, like there's the two different things. And mindfulness is bringing that to the forefront of your mind and saying, why am I doing this? You know, that's what a plate should look like, right? That's what you're, you know, more or less. And now they're even talking, you know, encroaching into that grains and carbohydrates area where, you know, they're saying maybe three fourths of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. 
You know, so that's something to, that we can all strive for. Have you seen that new commercial, uh, Balance of Nature? No, okay. Balance of Nature. Balance of Nature, it's, it's uh, they're, they're capsules. Yep. Okay, they're, they're gel capsules, I guess, but they, they have processed um, all kinds of fruits and vegetables in a natural state. Okay. Crush them up. Yeah. And they put them into these capsules. Yeah. And they're selling them on TV now. So I'm suspicious. Yeah. I'm always so so. If you didn't if you didn't hear them, there's a something you saw on TV that what's it called? Balance of nature. Balance of nature, and they're capsules where they supposedly take vegetables and yeah, they grind everything grind up. everything up and put it in there. I'm very suspicious of that. I'm always suspicious of that. Even you know, there's a woman that I follow on YouTube who she quote drinks her salads, and she does. She'll make a salad and put it in a blender and drink it. I'm just still suspicious that it. it you know, your body needs time to process nutrients, and that's why we have whole foods. So I'm always, you know, when someone tells me, oh, this pill replaces this vegetable, I don't believe it, uh, you know. And that, but that's just me. Maybe it does, yeah. you know. Yeah. That, that pill that he's talking about it doesn't sound like it would have enough. Yeah, I, in yeah I just, yeah, it, it's as well just, just not buying it. it. Yeah, right. Um, cooking methods, that really it counts. You know, you want to steam for nutrients, you roast for flavor. When you do saute, use less oil and bake things for healthier options. All that stuff works. Meal planning, you know, you want to balance the food groups. Prep your meals in advance. This is something I've started doing. I won't say I do it every week or every Sunday, but I would say maybe two Sundays out of the month, I get it right and I spend some time for the week planning out what I'm gonna eat and I portion it out and um, it does work. It does work. You know, the key is to make stuff you like. Don't tell yourself you're making something because you, you're going to like it or, you know, you should like it. You know, if you don't like it, don't make it. Make what you like. All right. So food labels. You know, I think, you know, by now we all know how to read food labels. But you do have to be very careful of them because they play around with the portion sizes. You know, they're all kinds of things. They play around with, like, added added uh, sugars as opposed to natural sugars, you know, you, all, all that stuff. So it's really, really important to look at that stuff. Total carbohydrates is, that's, that's your sugar. You don't, you, the added sugars, yeah, that's fine, but the total carbohydrates, that's what you really need to pay attention to if you're watching your sugar, right? All right, so now let's have a pop quiz. Because the, also in addition, that was just a little primer on, on some of the food and nutrition. But there's other things to be, you know, uh, aware of in the kitchen. So what do you think? What's the number one cause of accidents in the kitchen? Knives. Someone says knives. Fire. 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 Slips, and Slips and falls. Slips and falls. Which is true of every room in the house. Yeah. So, you know, so you, you, know, you want to think about that. Look, for example, we do a um, presentation on get better sleep. And one of the things I always throw in there is, if you have area rugs, get rid of them. Just lose them because they're nothing but a hazard, particularly at night when it's dark out, you know. Same thing in the kitchen. So 10 hazards to watch out for. And these are, you know, some pretty important things. So obviously, you know, wet floors, clutter, loose rugs, you, you want to stay away from that. Burns. I can't tell you how many times I burned myself stupidly. Um, you know, and, and as you get older, your, your skin, you know, is, it doesn't bounce back as, as much as it used to. So you really do have to be careful about that. Um, and that last on the, at the end of that sentence, steam, the steam can really burn you from things. You know, I cook a lot of soup and sometimes I forget and I open it like that and it blows into your face and that can be disorienting, you know, very careful. My stove, the dials are way in the back. Yeah. And I remember reaching one day and, and it was steam from what I was cooking. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to be very careful of things that, like that. You can cover with, with a cover. Yeah. You know, open it up. Yeah. Try to open them with the cover facing away from the Right, so it pushes the steam. Very good. It's push, yeah. Open it like that so the steam pushes away. Right. Um, you know, food poisoning is something that is should be on your radar um, for a number of reasons. One of them, the cross-contamination, undercooked food. You know, we understand all that. Expired ingredients, we understand all that. But the pre-cut stuff... And I'm as guilty as anybody. I buy it myself. But you are putting yourself at, a, at more risk of exposure to some type of an illness from pre-cut because you just that you have no control over who or what that person was doing, cutting it up. What's pre-cut? So pre-cut is like fruit, 
that you buy in those little plastic tubs, bag salads, right? You know, the shrink wrapped, um, you know, soup mix, you know, they put like, you know, a couple potatoes, a couple carrots, some, you know, rosemary or something, and then they shrink wrap it. So that someone. I didn't, I didn't want to put watermelon, though. So I bought like four squares. Mm -hmm. So, so what you do now, you look at that as pre cut, but that's better than cubed, right? So, so that's, you can just envision it in your head. How do they pre cut? Well, they slice, slice, pick it up, put it in as opposed to slice, slice, pick it up, pick it up, cut, pick it up, cut, and do it over and over and over again. You know what I mean? So that when I say the wholer your food is, the better off you are, you know? Um, so you definitely want to, you know, keep in mind of that. Electrical hazards. I did this one not even a week and a half ago. I used one of those hand blenders, you know, the, the immersion blenders, and I wasn't paying attention. And, I, and all of a sudden I'm like, this soup smells funny. And it was the cord burning on the on the burner, you know, which could have been very dangerous, you know. So you want to be careful of that. You know, water near outlets, it's very fashionable now to put outlets in kitchens, tons of outlets, and put them all over the place. But you want to keep in mind that you have water sometimes splashing around here. Um, and then appliances. Today's appliances, a lot of them are energy efficient and and they don't cause a lot of problems, but some appliances you can plug in and you know immediately you know trip a, a breaker or something like that. So you want to be careful, particularly older appliances. Um, and I you know I find a lot of people like I have a lot of my mom's appliances and stuff that she had, and there's a few there that I'm like you know what these cords are pretty frayed. Let's get a new crock pot. You know it's not they're they're not that expensive. You know. So chemical exposure is another one. You know, you want to be careful about where you store cleaning agents and chemicals and all that stuff. Uh, you definitely don't want to put it near food. Um, and then choking, eating too quickly, talking while eating, not chewing thoroughly. That's always a, you know, a concern. Heavy lifting. Heavy pots. You see that? That's a big one. For example, I love cast iron. I love my cast iron. I have pans. I have Dutch ovens. I love them. But I can envision a day not too far off where they're going to sit on a shelf because I'm sick of washing them. They're really heavy. You know, we, Frank and I were talking about carpal tunnel before. I'm gonna, he just had the surgery. I'm going to have to have it myself. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm sure the cast iron pans aren't helping in that respect. You know. So, um, But the good news is you can buy small ones now. So I buy, I have a Dutch oven that's just a three quart Dutch oven. That just, it's enough for me. It's very light and easy. I have a couple little cast iron pans that are very small. It just, you know, fit just a chicken breast or something in it. Um, fire, you know, you want to be careful of that. Um, and gas leaks, you know, that's another one. You know, you want to pay attention to that with turning the stove off all the way. That's, you know, a big thing with, uh, especially a lot of the older stoves was they had a little wiggle room there at the top. And if you didn't get it all the way, sometimes it, you know, leaked out. So you just want to kind of keep those things in mind. Um, to sum all that stuff up, you know, keep your workspace clean. Use sharp knives safely. I bought a brand new knife. I was, I don't know, I was reading something on Facebook about these wonderful knives. You had to have them. So I went on Amazon and bought one. It was a $100 knife, but it was supposed to be the greatest knife ever. And the first time I used it, I sliced open my thumb and I still can't feel the tip of my thumb. Like I went that deep into it and I'm like, okay, enough with the knives for me. So, so you just, you know, you want to be careful with that. Um, you know, watch for the other store, store food properly, watch where you walk, prevent burns, all that stuff. So now let's talk about some kitchen tips that believe it or not, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier where, um, you may be able to do things now, and for, for me, I can do things now, but you want to plan for, I want to be able to do things well into my 90s, right? So you want to do them the right way when you, as, as much as possible. Kind of like, think of it like good posture, right? If you practice good posture, you probably don't end up in the sciatic problem that I have, you know, with the sciatic problem that I have. So there are some things that are really good to do. Sitting while prepping food can be a real good one, you know, getting a, like a half, uh, you know, a stool or something, and I do that. I have a little stool that I cut at, always works. Using a slow cooker is a real great way to just kind of put things in there. The modern ones are very, very safe. It's, um, 
it's easy because I think it's probably in here something about using one pot to cook things so you don't get overwhelmed with dishes and all that stuff. So that's definitely something to think about. I bought a $10 slow cooker. Yeah. Um, probably eight years ago. And it's only, a, it's only one and a half pots. Okay. But I make that's perfect for that. And yeah. I was in a rush before, and I'm old. I don't care. See, there you go. Yeah. Hours. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And you know what? It, it sounds. It's, this is going to sound stupid, but it makes the house smell nice for a long time while you're cooking something in a slow cooker. You know. My it, son comes over. He comes, oh, what's that? Yeah. It's yeah. Like oh well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have the guys upstairs. To, uh, one of the guys is a is a short order cook. And he's always tries to guess what I'm cooking. He's like, I, I, is it chili? I'm like, oh, close. <laughs> um, you know, freezing, so I've been this, I like freezing better than any other form of um, saving things. You know, I have a, I, I jar things, uh, you know, all that stuff. Freezing for me works. I just buy the, um, the deli containers, the plastic ones, or sometimes the paper ones, whatever they are. Um, and I just make something, freeze it. For, I'm a single person, so for me it works. I just pop it right out. Particularly if I freeze soup or something like that, I don't even have to defrost it. I just peel, if I have a cardboard like soup container, I just peel the cardboard off and put the block of frozen soup right in the pan. You know. And I find that um, there's evidence to that. I don't find there's evidence to this. Fro frozen vegetables and things like that are just as good, if not better, for you than fresh because they're frozen at the peak of ripeness. So you want, you know, keep that in mind, whereas the fresh ones sit under the lights and travel here and all that stuff. I buy um, hamburgers, yep. like the patties. Okay, yeah. I'll freeze them individually. There you go. So that I can just That's a great way to do that, yeah. I used to go to um, Costco and I'd get the big things of salmon and I'd score it, freeze it, break it, and then I'd have little portions in the freezer. So yeah, same, same thing. You know, things like buying, uh, we'll say, containers of soups, yep. uh, uh, seafood chowders, yeah. like that. Yeah. I can, what do we say, a market basket. Yeah. They always have different flavors. Sure, yeah. So I can buy one, two, or three, maybe freeze two of them, yep. and use one of them. But if it's frozen, I can take it out, I stick it inside the microwave, of course, to cut off. Yeah, yeah. And I let it soften up. There you go. Up, yeah. And then I take what I want to use out of it, yeah. and the other half of it, I'll have maybe tomorrow. There you go, yeah. But I just soften up in the microwave. And then just scoop a little out. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the right way to do it. Absolutely. Um, prioritize one-pot meals. Again, it's less cleanup. Sometimes it's less cooking. I'm like the king of one-pot meals. I just I don't want to do dishes or anything. So if I find a way that I can do it all in one pot or pan, I do. Um, no salt seasonings. This You have to be very, very careful with even the soups. Not even the soups, especially the soups. You look at the sodium in some of those, and I've, I've looked at the market basket yeah. ones, and some of them it's you know, 30, 35% of your sodium for the day in one serving. So, and you need to be careful with that because sodium it, you know, causes you to retain water, it causes inflammation, all that stuff. Like, um, like onion, you can get onion powder. Yeah, onion salt. exactly. There's onion powder and onion salt. There's garlic yeah. powder and garlic salt. You stick with the powders, not the salts. You know, one time I was, I was cooking something, and this thing called for onion salt. Yep. Which I never had in the house. Yeah. I bought it and I used it. Yeah. After using it one time, you know what yeah. I did? Threw it, threw it away. away. Yeah, I don't blame you. That was it. Soups because they say, you know, 1,200 milligrams of sodium. Mm -hmm. But if you read it, that's per serving. And some of those little candle soups are mm -hmm. two and a half servings. I know. Yeah. I know. It's it's horrible. It's, too much it's horrible. It's horrible. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get. No, it's all. Oh, you can't. Anything that's shelf stable. Is going to have too much salt in it. What's an example of like a spice that works to use in places? So, you know, so you want to use things like paprika. Um, it, that works. Uh, even smoked paprika bring, is a really nice flavor. The garlic powder brings a nice flavor to it. You know, any, any of those things, anything that has a kind of a strong flavor. Um, oregano can be really good in certain dishes like tomato dishes, things like that. Um, yeah, all, just, you know, whatever. Lemon juice in place of salt is a, is a big one. I, I was looking at, at, at a recipe quickly, and I, I think I spotted uh, an ingredient, and they called it smoke liquid. Oh, liquid smoke. Liquid smoke. Yeah, yeah. 
Sure, there you go. Liquid smoke. That's it. I've never seen it. I used it. Yeah, Walmart has it. It's like a buck. Yeah. Yeah. I use it. I've used it in chili. Um, I've used it in hot sauce and beef jerky. When I make my own beef jerky, I add a couple drops of liquid smoke to it. It's a bottle about this big. Yeah, you'll you'll have it for years. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's expired. Yeah. Have you bought it where they sell? Uh, jazz of uh, spices. Uh, oh no, no! I've I've only bought it at supermarkets or Walmart yeah. or something. But I've never seen it. That's why I'm asking. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's. A, I've seen it at. I've definitely seen it at Stop and Shop, and, and I've definitely liquid, seen it at Walmart. A it's a liquid. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Is yeah. It yeah. It's yeah. It's in Roach Brothers. Yeah, I've seen it almost everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So few of them have a low salt version. Yeah. So I'm going to show you, to, if we have a little time at the end, I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm doing around the low salt soups. All right. Because you guys know I sell the soup. So I'll show you what I've been doing about it. And it's tips you can do at home for yourself, you know. Um, so use smaller pans. We kind of already talked about that. Uh, nonstick. You don't have to scrub nonstick as much. So you want to be careful. Some people don't like nonstick because there's chemicals on it. Um, and I understand that too. It can be dangerous if you scratch them. And if you do have not scratch nonstick, throw it away. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Um, non toxic. Yeah. It's non toxic, nonstick. Yeah. 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 That's good. And, and I love the enameled cast iron stuff too. But again, it's heavy, you know. Easy open containers. You know, that's. I'm 54 and I have a little bit of arthritis now. I can't imagine when I'm 84 trying to open some of those plastic, like the soup container, the deli containers and stuff. Those are really tough to open. Even the ones, you know, the little plastic ones with cheese in them or something. Yeah, oh yeah. I, can't have I know, I know. Yeah, it's, it's processed food, so don't eat it anyway. So. <laughs> No, I mean, because you know, I'm in the process of switching from plastic to cardboard with to paper, the paper soup containers for that very reason. I have a lot of my custom, all my customers are older and a lot of them have kind of complained to me like I can't, I, I, I put it in the freezer and I take it, I can't get it open. Um, so I'm going to, I'm switching to that. So you're not alone. Where do you find those cardboard containers you're talking about? So you can get them at Amazon. I would buy them on Amazon. Um, I don't, I don't think so. I haven't seen them anywhere. Well, there's Restaurant Depot, but you have to buy like, you know, 144 of them. So that probably doesn't do you any good. Um, i trying to think of, yeah, Amazon, I think, is probably your only bet. So the cardboard is disposable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Safety first, you know, double check appliances. We know that. Adapt recipes. We've been talking about that. So this for easy to chew and digest, but we're also, you know, talking about, um, you know, nutrients. Good have good nutrients. This one is. Um, this one reminds me. This isn't the actual story, but it reminds me of my grandmother. So when my grandmother was alive, she had um, vision problems, and eventually she went not completely blind, but you know. Pretty blind. She could make things out, but she really, she'd have to, you know, put things up really, really close. So I came to visit. And she did great. She did great for herself. And I went to visit her one day, and she's sitting at the table with this face. And I said, "What? What's wrong?" She says, "Oh, well, I went to make a peanut butter. No, I went to have toast and jelly." I said, "Okay." She said, "And I went and I I got it off and I put the jelly on." She said, "And I put it in my mouth, and it was the sponge and taco sauce." <laughs> <laughs> and we still laugh about that in my family, right? <laughs> she certainly did. Um, <clears throat> so I always think about that with expiration dates. And I think my poor little grandmother, if she was eating the sponge, thinking it was a piece of toast, she's probably not checking expiration dates either, you know? So you have to, and they, they're hard to find on some things. So you want to kind of keep that in mind because some thing, most things, they're just going to lose flavor and it's not, not bad for you, but you want to be careful too, you know? So when I find them, I write them in magic. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, it's true. You can't see them. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's, that is, that's the right way to do it. You should avoid raw foods, particularly as you get older. 
um, you, because as we get older, we're more susceptible to, to bacterial infections and things like that. We just are. One of the things, um, I was reading an article a while back um, from a, uh, an attorney. It was an attorney who asked about, um, they asked him, what would you, he was a food attorney, food safety attorney. And they said, what would you not eat? What are some of the things you don't eat? And the first thing he said was oysters, raw oysters. He said, I wouldn't eat them if you paid me. Um, he said, I've seen too many cases. The oceans are warming. There are cold water. You know, there just is more and more bacteria on them. And then he went into the cut fruit, cut fruit and salads we were just talking about earlier. Um, and those were basically his two big things. He said, I, those don't ever, you know, and I thought about it. And I, I've cut out oysters and I still use the pre-cut fruit sometimes because it's easy. But I do think about it a lot more. I'm like, hmm. I'm a little choosy where I buy it sometimes. The thing about cut foods too, if they sit in there too long, they lose their nutrients. Oh, they, they absolutely, they absolutely lose the nutrients. And, and that's, that's why, you know, what we were talking about earlier, frozen is better than fresh in many, many, many cases. The frozen stuff is, is right there at the peak of ripeness. Fish is very, they, they do it on the boats now, you know? So it's, it's out of the water, it's filleted, it's frozen, done as opposed to out of the water, filleted, on a truck, in some ice, at a market, to a restaurant, bang. I mean, that's a big difference there, if you think about it. I think it is. I think it is. What do you mean by cut fruit? Cut fruit, pre-cut fruit. Um, uh, bag salads, pre-cut uh, watermelon, the fruit mixes and all that stuff. I, I eat it, I buy it, but I kick myself every time because it's, it, we were talking earlier, you not you don't know who cut that you don't know how they were dressed you don't know what did they have gloves on did they not you just don't know you know um you, you mentioned uh black fish yes over the years i've had plenty of oysters on a half shell yeah i've had plenty of them. sure but that's as far as i want i will not eat or try sushi so i have gave up sushi too i i love sushi I love it, it. I yeah i gave it up and I won't. yeah I, I i just don't uh there's just too much going on now with, you know, things in the water and all that stuff. The salmonella that you worry about? Or I wanna... um, it could be salmonella. It could be just any kind of bacterial infection that could be on the fish, you know. My, my dad used to make, for my brother and I, homemade eggnog when we were sick. Oh, uh, with a raw um, egg? But with the problem with the eggs now, with the salmonella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's and raw they, is just. They make it in you know, do you know who makes it? It's Hood, the eggnog, and it's a secret. They only make it around a certain time of year, and they only make it around here. Believe it or not, it's a, it's a very like Massachusetts, New England thing. But they they it's kind of a secret what's in it. You know, you know? I, I had an aunt uh, who used to make homemade eggnog. Yep. She lived in the farm, made the best eggnog I've ever had in my life. Yep. I've never been able to duplicate it. See it. Never happened able you know why? Because you can't get the same ingredients that they had back then. I've been trying to do the same thing. I think I told you with chicken soup. Mm -hmm. My grandfather used to make a chicken soup that was this perfect golden color. It was always perfect. And I've never been able to recreate it. And I think it's because of what they used to feed the chickens and what they feed the chickens now. And I'm not necessarily saying it's good or bad. It's just different. I know what it's probably told. bad. But like I said, this was a farm. Yeah. And a farm. And she always did, they always had the freshest eggs yeah. from the chicken. Maybe sure. that was part of the secret. I don't know. Could be, yeah. Know. You know, but yeah. eggs eggs are something. You can leave eggs out. You know, eggs, you can leave, as long as you don't wash them. Oh, yeah. They have a little thin membrane on them. If you wash them, you have to put them in the refrigerator. But if you don't wash them, you can. they can stay out for weeks at a time. You know, you mentioned uh, cut, cut, uh, cut lettuce, cut yeah. salad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always used either whole iceberg or the romaine lettuce. Yeah. For a while, I switched over to the bag cut See, I don't even do the romaine. I do just just the whole iceberg. iceberg. I try I try the fact maybe can check the fact too much the fact it spoils too quickly too. It does. It spoils it spoils too quickly. Yeah. I tried it for a shot while. Yeah. I stopped and went back to the iceberg. There you go. And, that's it. and it's cheaper. Yeah. I mean, you're paying twice as much for the for the bag stuff as you are, sure. you know. It, and and again, it's lettuce. It's not like it's hard to cut up. It's lettuce, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, um, they do, they do. I, you're probably better off putting them in like a paper towel, a loose paper towel, instead of in something, let a little air get to them. Take them out of that package and put them in, I would put them in a loose paper towel and then just in a bowl or something. Lay them as flat as you can so they're not on top of each other too much. All right? In the refrigerator. In the refrigerator, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
you know, you want to be wary of alcohol. I end, I end the, this part of the thing on this. Um, it, does, it can affect you medications and things like that, but you also want to be careful drinking in the kitchen. You know, I mean, Julia Child could do it, but uh, I don't know if the rest of us can. So this, at this point, one of the things I'm like, okay, there's all these things to be thinking about in the kitchen. What's out there for people to utilize and use? And this is the beginning of that kind of list. I'm going to, you know, winnow it down as I can. But I found some really interesting stuff, um, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. So this was probably the second most common um, request I would get from my mom when she was alive, and I would, you know, pop over to visit her. Would, there would be a succession of things on the counter that she couldn't open, um, ranging from, you know, pickles to, you know, cleaning stuff. And, um, you know, so... You, these little grips and things, they really do help. So I definitely recommend those and they're, they're cheap enough. And you can see there's all kinds of ergonomic things. This is a, a screenshot of Amazon. Um, but you can see there's all kinds of things. This one is kind of interesting here. That little red one there. Yep. That opens the little, yep. It pops the, the jar lid right off, yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, in from the right. Oh, she wants me to walk. Oh, the bottom. Oh, I see. This one? Yeah. Yeah, that one right there. A couple jars and, and oh. all kinds of jars. And yeah. You just, it works kind of like a beer opener. I knew people would want this one. That's why I put this one first. I'm so glad. <laughs> what did you say? I, I knew people would want this one or would have already used something like this. Because it's, it's a really common problem of not being able to open some of these jars, you know. <clears throat> and you, you know, if you're somebody like me, you know, you, it gets dangerous because you end up smashing the thing on here and running into hot water. And just buy one of these. So, <clears throat> how these popped up, I can see. Like, do you have an Amazon account? No. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to use Amazon before I leave. Yeah, it's an. Um, they call them ergonomic or adaptive, if you either of those two words, adaptive bottle opener or ergonomic bottle opener. And if we have a little time at the end, I'm gonna show you some of you guys how to use Amazon because yeah, it's so have, easy. If you were looking it up on Amazon, would you look at their <coughs> bottle opener set? You just put in bottle opener or, or adaptive <laughs> bottle opener. <coughs> I'll do it for you. If I can get on the internet, I'll do it before we're done here. So can you, can you um, yep. say what each one of those is? <coughs> I can. I can't read that. Oh, I can show you. Yeah, they're just all just different. They're just all different jar openers. That's all. All different ways of doing it. So, like this one, this one here, you squeeze like pliers. See it? And you put like you do that. Like this one, you pry. It goes like that, and it pops the lid right off. Right here. You hold this end, and this end. There's a little thing there. See, you can actually see it right there. That's this without the red. See it? And it's on top of the bottle. It's popping it right off. And then uh, this one, this is interesting. This one sits in the corner like a, under a cabinet. Like, so you just put it, you know, and it's made to, for any size. And you just put it in there and you can twist the jar right off. So that, I thought that was kind of cool, too. To it attaches underneath the cabinet. Yeah. Which end is attached? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No, the top. It's just the top. Yeah, just that's it. So you put the bottle in the... Yeah, the bottle's not always there. You put the bottle in, and then and then you pull the bottle out. That's okay. No, no, no. Then you pull the. That's just the example, you know. I that's kind of unique. I had never seen anything like that. I kind of like it. Um, you know, some other things, non-slip cutting boards. Um, I threw away all. I had glass cutting boards, and I got rid of them all. I'm like, this is just not working out for me. So I got the ones with the non-stick. Uh, I mean, with the non-slip thing at um, on the other side. And, you know, it works. A lot better for me. This one is great if you have dexterity issues. This is a, it's basically just a knife that all you have to do is roll over the, the food. So if you get like carpal tunnel, you know, if you, you know, this repetitive, look at this motion that I'm doing right here. Like that's a, re, that can really, you know, wreak some havoc on you, especially as we get older. So that knife is made, you can actually use two hands if you want. You just do this, you know, and just basically roll it to dice stuff. You don't have to and just roll through it. Anything, carrots, celery, it's metal. Yeah, yeah, it's just a metal blade. Now this one, it, this one's a little weird when you first look at it, 
and I, I don't think anyone in this room needs this, but it's nice to know that these things are out there if we ever do need this stuff. I don't know if you've seen this, but that's a, so instead, so that's a spoon. So instead of having to turn your wrist to eat, you see that? It's just made so you can just do this. See it? See, instead of having to do this, right? It says 15 to $30 for a set. How many yeah. have a set? Oh, they're all different ones. There's tons. You can find sets for four people. You can find sets for one. Yeah. But, you know, I did. I thought that was pretty, you know, again, when you first look at it, it looks a little strange. But now it makes perfect sense if you think about it. If you're in a cast, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons that you might want to use that. These are great. Um, I actually have one for hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> it's not like a knife thing, but it's, it's great for hard-boiled eggs to slice them right up for salads and things like that. But if you, you know, slice just the onion alone right there. Just cutting that, that thing is worth it just for cutting onions, if you ask me. Um, and there's, like I said, there's all different ones. There's big ones, there's small ones, you know. And we'll do a little search if we have time. Have you ever used that? I have. I have. I have. Yeah, they're good. They're not, you know, they're not made to be, like, commercially used. They're made to be used, you know, you cut one onion and go about your day. They're not made to be, you know, cut 20 onions at a time. Kind of like with the, the plunger on the top, you do that and it mushes some of them. Yeah. Almost a pulp, and that yeah. Big one. Yeah. I cheat and use a food processor a lot of the time anyway. It's you know I, my I have it down seven pulses. If I just push the button seven times, it comes out the way I want the size that I want it to be. So. So these these are great if you're someone that gets up in the middle of the night and makes a cup of tea or something like that, and you're half asleep. It shuts itself off automatically, um, you know, it, and it does boil water very quickly. I have a secret little, even though I, I'm a soup maker, I have a secret little guilty pleasure that I eat those ramen noodles sometimes. <laughs> they're quick. I have to, they're quick. Yeah, they're quick. You know, it's just loaded with salt. But, um, but I have something similar to this that, that brings the water right up to a boil very quick, you know. So I thought these were pretty cool. Um, this, if you do any kind of blending or anything like that, um, it makes perfect sense that the handle should be bigger. I mean, that's a great handle. If you think about like the one I have at home, it's got like a little handle that, you know, it's hard to grip and all that stuff. So this just ergonomically, there's a lot of discoveries now that they're finding out. They can do a lot of 3D modeling and they're saying, why, why is this designed this way? It's not, that's not efficient. Let's redesign it. And these are some of the things you see. Non-skid mixing bowls, you know, they they make all these things, you know. You know, I find that if I'm using uh, a dish or whatever it might be, yep. that's not non-skid, yep. I don't want to just move, yep. I'll put it inside the pot holder. Oh, there you go. Pot holder works, a dish towel, a damp, something I use a damp dish towel. Right yeah, there. yeah. So easy. They have all these, like, the, you know, you can, obviously, you've seen all this stuff, but this next one... This is pure brilliance. Whoever came up with this is brilliant. Look at that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just little rubber tubes that things fit in, and it extends the handle for you, you know? So, pretty cool. <clears throat> so with that, I don't, you probably don't have any questions, but I want to show you guys, if you have time, I want to show you some how to use Amazon. Right. You could, oh. Sure. Yeah, you're you talking know. about safety around the stove and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think I I think some people maybe without realizing it yep. might have whatever it might be some kind of paper something around the stove. Right. It could be a recipe. Oh, it could be whatever. I've, I've almost I've almost set myself on fire with a wooden spoon. Sure. I've set a wooden spoon down, and I still use a wooden spoon. They tell you you shouldn't use them anymore because. Okay. They can collect bacteria, but I don't care. I love my wooden spoons. But I, I almost burned myself up with one. So, all right, so this is Amazon, right? Is anyone here on Amazon? Does anyone use Amazon? A little bit? Or, okay, good. All right, good. A little bit? Okay. Um, so if you're not on Amazon, it's a, it's a safe place to shop. It, you're not going to get scammed. You know, just stick with Amazon. You know, buy the stuff that Amazon's offering. Stick with them, and you'll be fine. You know, don't go off to someone else's website and buy, you know, if you're not familiar with online purchasing. But all you do is you go on the Amazon and you just sign up for an account 
and they're going to try to get you to sign up for what's called Amazon Prime. Do you have Prime? Do you have Prime? Okay. So Prime is, I forget how much it costs now. It's a couple hundred bucks at least. For me, it's worth it. It eliminates a lot of shipping costs. You get things a lot faster. Um, you get movie, you can see movies on Amazon if you do on demand streaming and stuff like that. You don't have to be a Prime member, but if you end up buying a lot at Amazon using it, you know, like once a week or so, then it's worth it. All right. So once you're done, you, you get in, you sign up. So now you say, first of all, they're great at selling. It's look at you can see the items I was looking for. See it? It shows you. So it also that's another reason to sign in is it picks up where you left off. You know. So let's say. Um, you know, we want to look for, um, let's do the can opener, right? Okay, so I'll call it, I'll just call it adaptive can opener. Now, look, you can see the suggestions coming up already. See them? So it's suggesting adaptive electric can opener, adaptive can opener for arthritic hands. Well, that's probably us. One-handed can opener. You know, so it's giving you options as you... Now, you can just say, just adaptive can opener, and all, a mixture of those will pop up, or you can get more specific, right? So let's look at what it comes up for arthritic hands. I'm interested in that. All right, so there it is, right? So now you look at that, and you can see in the up top left, there's the can, and that's... So all you do is, it's just that little thing, and you just twist it around like that. See it? So you don't have to do this. That opens the can, yeah. I bet if we were to poke around in here, I don't know if we have time, but I bet there's a video of it being done. Let's see. Oh, hey, I'll go back. Hang on one sec. Let me see if there's a video. Oh, all right. Well, we'll go back and find it. Yeah, so let's see. Videos, see, six videos. Here's how you open cans with your new Kitchen Mama electric can opener in three easy <laughs> oh, you don't have to hold it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? And I bet the edges are not shaft around it. Yeah. All right, let me go. Twenty nine ninety nine. All right, what did you, did you want to see something on here? You saw something? When you went down. It's below the... Below this? Yeah, I think so. It's a whole feet thing. This? On the far right, what is that? Easy open, oh yeah, it's a pull tap. It's a, see it? Yeah, I have it, and it's got other things on it. Does it? And I don't know what to do with it. Oh, well, I, I, it's I it so anything, it looks like anything that has a pull tab, it can do. Yeah, it's, it's so big, oh, it's clumsy. Yeah. No, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. I yeah. don't even know where I got it. Okay. like soda Yeah, it's open, so yeah, anything with a pull tab at the top, you know? It's got other things yeah. on it, too. Yeah, it's probably like one of those multi tools or something. You know, it does a bunch of different things. You know, all right. What else? What else do we look for? What, what's something else we might be interested in? How? Let's look for those uh, soup containers. Right, the cardboard ones. All right. So there's the plastic ones. Right. Well, no, we let so this so don't forget now. This is adapting to me. It knows it's me. So when I buy soup container, I do. I buy you know 150 of them at a time, right? So in yours, it's not going to suggest that for you. It's going to it suggest something smaller for you. But let me put soup containers. I'll just put cardboard. No, it's not really cardboard. Paper, maybe. Yeah, paper soup containers with lids. There we go. So now this is where you, you want to shop around because this is where, like, we, you know, you mentioned the Campbell soup. There's two and a half servings. You've got to be careful here. You've got to watch the pricing and pay attention to, like, per unit pricing is really what you're looking at, right? But they don't necessarily, it's not as big as the, you know, see it right there? So it's, they're 50 cents each if you bought them that way. See it? This one doesn't list it. 
that one's 28 cents each if you brought it. So, you, you know, you have to just kind of shop around like you would anywhere else, like you would in a, in a store. But what I like about this, so let's say you click on this one, right? <clears throat> so it gives you a little description. Then it gives you the reviews. Now, a review for a soup container is a, a bit much. But, hey, you know, maybe, maybe we want it. So you look at the reviews. See it? 310 ratings. Well, it, I guess the ratings are pretty good. It's got a bunch of five stars up there, right? But these can be really helpful for more expensive things, appliances. I bought a, like a dorm room style refrigerator and I read, I read the, all the reviews and went through it and that's how I made my decision, you know, on which one to get. <clears throat> but that's it, that's how you do it. When you find something you like, you just, you know, if you wanna buy it, you click add to my cart. Are they are. They are. Yeah. It doesn't leak. They're they're best for freezing though. They're best for free. They shine for for freezing. That's the one I was saying. Like, I just peel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. Like I freeze a lot of chicken stock that I homemade chicken stock, and then I'll just saute some vegetables and then put the block of broth in there, and it melts, and I have a soup. You know. So, but uh, I wouldn't, yeah. When you, uh, when you buy from Amazon, yeah. uh, is it the same price for shipping on everything? So if you're a Prime member, most shipping is free. That's where Prime comes in really handy. You know, it's worth it. If you're pro I would say if you're going to make more than a handful of purchases for Amazon, it's worth it to have, be a Prime member. Go ahead. So it used to be if you spent twenty five dollars, your shipping was free. It just went up last week. Now you have to spend thirty five dollars for your shipping to be free. But so I always make sure I spent twenty five dollars so I never dealt with shipping. But if you like absolutely needed something and it wasn't thirty five dollars, they do charge you shipping. Sometimes the shipping is as much as the oh, yeah. so it's yeah. not worth it to me. I'd rather spend the extra, get something, yeah. and um, so you then you shipping. put several purchases together. <coughs> so you spend the thirty-five, and then and then all the other shipping is free. Returns are usually free also, so that's real good to know. You're not and returns, you can do returns at Kohl's now. So you don't have to ship it back. You, if you get something from Amazon you don't like, you just go to Kohl's, give it to them, and they'll ship it back and for you. you. Can also go to other places. There's other places? Oh, Great, yes. yeah. Um, CBS. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. No charge. Put it in the box. It came in the bag. It came in. Give it to them, and it's gone. So I essentially run most of my, most of the dry goods for my business, packaging, containers, all that stuff. It's all off Amazon. It's, I don't have to warehouse anything because it, I, they offer next day delivery on most stuff. So if I start running low on something, I don't, I don't have to stock it. I just, it's, it's on my front porch the next day, you know. Um, there's a record of everything. So, you know, I know what I bought, what I haven't bought. I, I'm a, membership a year, one year. The Prime membership, it's, yeah, it's, I've, it's exp it is expensive. But I, it, you know, for me, it's worth it. For me, it's worth it. I buy a lot of books, a ton of books, and buy you, you can buy used books on Amazon. That's what I, I buy used books for, like three bucks, and then the shipping is three bucks. But you get a you get a new book or a used book for six bucks that's selling for twenty six bucks. You know, new. My Amazon account is so old. I mean, it's just get a new one because they didn't have all this warehouse stuff yeah. when I joined it. Yeah. It was. Uh, Videos or yeah. books. Sure, sure. Or music. Yeah. They have everything now. Everything. I mean, some stuff they'll deliver that day. And that's pretty amazing, too. Not, not me. Not, well, not, in pro, not for Prime, but yeah. Yeah. So I would encourage you guys, play around with Amazon. And if you, if you think it's for you, next time I'm here, I think I'm here next week. I'm coming back next week to do um, how to how to get more fish into your diet, I think. Um, but if you get stuck or something, just come in and ask me and I'll fire it up and show you how to do it. Um, how to get how to get more fish into your diet, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read this thing, you know, Americans don't eat enough fish or vegetables. You know, so I figured I'd try it. All right, we good. Any other issues, questions?
All right. Question yeah. To yeah, that's fine. Items. Yeah. I'm trying to find a mat that goes on your tub that's kind of cushiony. Yep. I can't find one anywhere. Amazon. <laughs> Let's, right. Well, more for like a back issue or. Yeah, one, yeah, one that it, it goes on the tub and it sort of slip, you know, won't slip. And it's got cushion instead of just like regular rubber. It looks kind of out of I have a. Yeah. But it's for the tub. But it looks like uh, it's almost like grass sticking up. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. On the on the left, top left, the brown. The. You want one to step on? Yeah. No, I want it to stand on in my tub while I'm taking a shower. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have a bath mat with suction cups to the thing. Yep. On that side, it's suction cup, but then on the top, it's kind of like um, cushion, a spongy, you know, it's, it's soft on your feet. There you go. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, like this thing here. I don't know, that, no, that's cushion, though. You want it in it. Right here, yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's what you want. Yep. Excellent bathroom shower mat, non slip for elderly kids in bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, just poke around on there. <clears throat> and then it suggests others. See that? Products related to this item. See it? David. Yeah. Could I use any of that? Those items up there? When I take a shower, I have a pair of nice rubber sandals. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Without any kind of mat. Yeah, okay. And they, they, they so much stop me from sliding, slipping, yeah. or anything. When, when I used to on, when I used to go to the gym, on. I used to see people okay. there, yeah. They're really good. Rubber yeah. sandals. Yeah. And boom, they look nice. Very cool. Yeah. They used to have uh, big shoes. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, happy Amazoning. All right? <laughs> I'll see you guys later.